Hello, welcome uh, to the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIG. Today is uh, November 5th. Uh, we have a few contributors on the call, Alisa Tong, Mark and me. And uh, let's see what we've got on our agenda. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, ongoing collections, announcements, mailing list, uh, some program updates, and the yeah, upcoming events. Let's just go through the agenda. So, for ongoing collections, yeah, I will just quickly show the current status. So, last week we announced um, the candidates um, for the elections. Uh, the current situation that we have uh, to contest the roles, uh, governance board members, we elect uh, two board members and also uh, release officers. Uh, the rest uh, of the officers, including events officer, are not contested. So effective uh, December 3rd, Marky will become uh, uh, the events officer. Uh, he was unable to join uh, today. He is at the Spinnaker Summit. Um, but yeah, uh, there will be a lot of coordination um, and uh, this SIG will be the venue for that. Uh, thing, same for other officers. So security officer, infrastructure officer, uh, uh, no changes. Um, for documentation officer, no changes as well. Mark uh, will keep uh, leading this effort as well as uh, the documentation SIG. Um, so we will also spend some time in order to uh, communicate uh, the elections to contributors. Uh, to get registrations and before that to get nominations. Our current situation is that we are not that high on the registration numbers, but at the same time, uh, we've got enough registrations uh, to think that uh, these elections are legitimate. So, um, any additional promotion will be appreciated. Uh, but yeah, I think that we are on the way uh, uh, to get enough votes. The voting itself uh, starts on uh, November 10th, so it's five days from now. Okay. Any questions, comments before we move on? No. Well, actually, no. since since Jacqueline just joined us, Oleg, is there anything we could envision that the Continuous Delivery Foundation might be able to help in the promoting of the ongoing elections. Certainly, we, we're doing social media efforts. We've okay. got LinkedIn. Are there things that CDF might help us? Um, yeah, I can definitely. Whatever. If you've are, it makes it honestly a lot easier for me if I could just copy and paste. If like, if you've already have copy created, and if you've got like any like little uh, creative assets made for it, I'm happy to just like repost it instead of having to reinvent the wheel and having to write all new things. So if, do you have like a shared file? I could just start pulling from it and then I can schedule um, in our tweet deck and also through through LinkedIn, this promotion. Um, so we don't have shared content. We have uh, posts in place. Uh, if we need, so you can just repost them. Uh, okay, so you just want me to like retweet and repost them? I just so it would be the easiest way. Um, okay, but, can uh, I get links to that and then I yeah, can I start doing the, that? Uh, the links to the chat. No, not this one. Uh, so just a second. So yeah, uh, just all of uh, all of those start to just retweet them. Yeah, we have quite a lot of traffic uh, these days. Yeah, so this one we are happy to announce candidates. Okay. Um, cool. So this is the best to be reposted. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Uh, LinkedIn uh, Jenkins project. We have basically the same uh, post. Okay, and then are you, is there like, do you have other assets like a blog or anything uh, like that? Because uh... Yeah. <sighs> so just a second, I'm adding uh, the link. So, okay. So this uh, LinkedIn post, uh, then we have a blog uh, here. So again, uh, this is um, the recent announcement, but yeah, this okay. what it makes sense to repost. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will work with Roxanne to get mm -hmm. um, the blog reposted, um, if that's okay. Like basically, we'll just copy and paste it on the CDF blog. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Okay, and then um, and then I'll go and repost that stuff right now. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so far, so basically, November 10th uh, is when the voting starts, and um, uh, the voter registration uh, ends on November 8th. So, for example, if there is some invite uh, to get it out uh, tomorrow, it would be awesome. Uh, but, okay. Yeah. Let me, what's today's date? Today's already Thursday. Um, let me talk to her because I wasn't, I don't know if we captured that in our newsletter. Um, I know she did ask for project updates, um, but if that wasn't captured, I'll ask her to, to see if it, there's still time to include it. She sits in Germany, so it might be kind of late for me to catch her, but I'll, I'll try to definitely get it. So yeah, we added information about the upcoming collections to the to, uh, to the this month's project update. So the one uh, which was requested by uh, Dan uh, Lawrence. Uh, but yeah, having a kind of separate reference would be also nice. Yeah. And the rest uh -huh. you can just uh, repost them right away or when uh, this slot is fine this year. Okay, I'll do that right now. <laughs> okay. Anything else on elections? No. Oh, oh, actually, yes. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, you're eligible to vote, I would think, as a contributor. You may not realize it, but you and Alyssa both. You know, oh, I you didn't say, know that. Submit code, but anyone who contributes to the Jenkins Project is eligible, mm -hmm. and the eligibility is quite simple. You need to be a, a public contributor, which you are. It doesn't have to be code. Yeah. OK. Uh, even if we've never, like, I've, I've never actually committed, like, a pull request no, or anything. Right. That is, okay. That oh, is okay. Not Good to know. And, okay. And one, of, one of the challenges for us in, in, in people understanding that is they think, oh, I must do these grand, grand, great, huge things in order to be allowed to vote. No, no, you need to be a contributor. And that could be a, being a voice helping us. So oh, I didn't know that. Doing, you are eligible as far as I can tell. Cool. Yeah, uh, we specifically made this change. Uh, because, uh, yeah, in previous elections, we considered contributors only who did contributions uh, through, uh, well, basically either through Jira or through GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, now we removed uh, any border uh, so that uh, any public contribution counts. Okay, cool. All right. I'll definitely make sure to vote then. Yep, and I, I plan on voting as well. Uh, just don't miss uh, the registration deadline. <laughs> yes. uh, if you haven't registered yet. Fast. We'll, we'll early vote this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go with the theme. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Just don't take too long like the U.S. is to count. Yeah. Well, I won't comment on that. <laughs> uh, no, all of us are like, come on. <laughs> okay. So yeah, moving on. Uh, announcements mailing list. least. So I think that we should finally introduce one. Uh, we discussed it uh, one week ago at the Jenkins governance meeting. I took an action item. So basically the intent is to have a new, let's say Jenkins announcements at Google groups. So the idea is quite uh, simple. It's a uh, low traffic uh, mailing list. So maybe one, two messages per month, maybe a bit more when needed. Uh, to communicate mostly to contributors, uh, not to users. Though we can actually have both uh, contributor and user. Uh, why it's important? Because, for example, what we realize with elections and other community events, basically we don't have a way to reach out to the community. We have user mailing lists, we have developer mailing lists, uh, but uh, not so many contributors actively watch them because there is a high traffic. So creating a separate uh, mailing list would definitely make sense. So uh, these are intentionally low traffic folk and the primary focus is contributors. So this would effectively have avoided our having to extract the list of maintainers. Is that the kind of thing? So they would self subscribe to be to be included in that kind of list? Either yes. So obviously a such kind of uh, newsletter would take uh, a long to ramp up to get enough followers, especially if you didn't promote it. If you promote it, yeah, it will still require considerable time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. 
Uh, just a second, I need to respond to the message. Uh, but uh, yeah, I plan uh, to introduce uh, this uh, list. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, once uh, they're there, I will probably write a blog post, etc. But it really depends on my capacity, which is not exactly impressive these days. Okay. So uh, uh, for Jenkins is the way. Uh, would you like uh, to summarize uh, the status, Alisa? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Jenkins is the way. Um, oh. Okay. Are you able to see that, Oleg? Uh, yes. So I would need to, to sign up for um, oh. uh, a Dropbox. Darn it. Okay. So I can okay. do that, but uh, yeah, not. Uh, on the screen share mode. Okay. So if you want, you can take over and show it uh, them. All right. So um, Mark, sorry, you're hearing this again, but um, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it and then I'll share the video. So basically what we did was we took, um, so we, we generated a bunch of user stories and case studies for Jenkins is the way. And we wanted to be able to share this via another vehicle besides, you know, um, a document um, PDF file, right? So we, we put this into a video. Um, so basically it's a two to three minutes testimonial video from the actual user. And um, let me share that right now. Let's see if I can do this. Um, share screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. So yes, this is this is from uh, Timmy, and um, he's a software engineer. So we have a case study on him as well um and so now we're just putting into video oh it looks like my internet is not liking this too much Ugh, sorry but basically it's it's a two minutes video he's talking about the challenges that he that he and his company or his team faced, and how they use jenkins what was their goal what was their outcome and very brief and um I, we, we, we stuck with the theme, Jenkins is the way. Um, and what I like to do with these videos is to post them on YouTube, our Jenkins YouTube, and as well as um, CDF YouTube page, if Jackie is okay with having it there. Totally, I'm like so excited about this content. I was like, can we use it? Because last <laughs> time we used the case study, what, I can't remember, was it T-Mobile? Yeah. Timo got super upset at us. So yeah, I'm totally about sharing this content. This is really awesome. Right. So this, um, so we learned our lesson from T-Mobile. So we made sure that we're able to share this with a, bright, uh, a broader audience. And we did get the okay. So I'm more, so these are the two videos that, that um, we've uh, finished. So we're continuing to work on more videos towards the end of this year. So I'm shooting for two more videos. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to use this content um, besides, you know, like on YouTube where, where video is, is, is more acceptable. But anyways, I'm sorry, I can, for some reason. Okay, oh, this oh, there seems goes. to be working. <laughs> Oh, oh, not anymore. No. It's okay. Um, yeah, so just whenever you can share those, um, Alyssa, I'll create a playlist in the CDF YouTube. And then okay. um, I'll also start sharing it um, on social media. So like tweet it, tweeting it. And um, also yeah. I'll share that with, uh, see how we can start integrating that into like the newsletter or any email communications, like that kind of stuff. So I get some, some promotion. Yeah. Great. And then I also submitted a couple of weeks ago, Jackie, I submitted a couple of Jenkins is the ways case studies and user stories uh, okay. to the CDF page. Did okay. You, did you get those by the way? I, let me, sorry. I haven't looked at it in a while. Okay. Um, but yeah, let me look at it now that I, 
that you brought up. So they're case studies. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Cause yeah, we haven't done anything with case studies in a while. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely tweet about this cause I don't have anything. Okay. Um, oh, cool. Awesome. And, and then I'll, um, I'll probably submit a blog as well that talks about, um, that talks about some of these um, stories. Okay. So. Very cool. We can also publish uh, such uh, videos directly uh, on uh, Twitter or on uh, YouTube, even without uh, the blog post. Sorry, not YouTube, uh, LinkedIn. So for these uh, channels, we can just post them directly. If it's a preference. But an additional blog post would also help. Right. Well, and, and certainly posting a video into LinkedIn increases the likelihood that people will, will view it, yeah. watch it. So it's a, a higher engagement. So yeah, LinkedIn sounds really great. Yeah, okay. I can definitely do all that too through our so channels. I currently don't, so Tyler hasn't responded to me. And um, so I currently do not have access to LinkedIn and Twitter. And so who would be able to help me with at least LinkedIn? Marky has been helping me with Twitter for Jenkins CI. Oh, I can, so I can, LinkedIn, this is, go ahead. For LinkedIn, I can just grant you permissions. It's me who owns the account, uh, not uh, Tyler at the moment. Ah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, at the same time, if it's just posting uh, the video, it's not a problem. I can help at any moment. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, for Twitter, uh, I will look in uh, Tyler again because I have a few other topics. So. Ah. And now, Alyssa, those, the two videos as currently exist are hosted on Dropbox. The idea is we'll put them on the Jenkins channel on YouTube once they've been approved, once we have agreed that they're okay, is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. Because then I assume Jackie would, would reference them, would refer to the, re reference them in her playlist right from the Jenkins playlist, from the Jenkins YouTube channel. Yeah, I could do that for sure. Or, um, you know, if you get me the raw files, I can upload them there too. Mm -hmm. um, up to you guys, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I don't know on YouTube channel management. I was assuming that single copy in two playlists is probably better than two copies in two playlists, but- Yeah, probably you're right. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just reference it then. But I think what will be better, Alyssa, mm -hmm. um, instead of me like retweeting and like re-sharing some of these existing posts, if it comes out directly from the CDF as like we're posting it, mm -hmm. um, that might be that might be nice too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm flexible, so. All right. So should I send the videos to the outreach uh, mailing list for approval? Uh, it, uh makes sense to double check, but yeah, I don't think it's a big problem. Okay. Just go ahead. Okay. Uh, now, do you have, do you have YouTube upload permission, Alyssa? If you don't, I do, and I can, I can upload them to YouTube. Yeah, I do not. Okay. I, I thought you have permissions to YouTube, Alyssa, just a second. Anyway, if you need uh, YouTube permissions, it's also something we can uh, get you. Though in this case, it will uh, require an email to the developer mailing list. Uh, but yeah, technically you can get your permissions. Okay. Just a second, I'm checking the account because I was sure that you have access. Oh, I, I have never uploaded a video to YouTube on Jenkins CI for Jenkins CI. Mm, yeah. Just a second. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I was uh, wrong. You are not in the list. 
We have quite a long uh, list of participants which needs a cleanup. Uh, but yeah, you're not in the list. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so yeah, if you send a message to the developer mailing list, it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that topic or should we move on? We can move on. Okay, yeah, just a second. Okay. So I got distracted a bit. Okay, uh, so a preferred video. Yeah, I still have the action item to post that. The governance the governance has agreed that we can put it on the Jenkins.io site. I just need to get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, then uh, upcoming events, we have FOSDEM, we have JSOC, we have uh, Contributor Summit. Uh, Mark asked governance, what do you mean? Uh, I, have, I had the action item from a previous item, the previous meeting notes that I had seen that I need to submit a request that we propose to have a Contributor Summit and that get the governance board approval that yeah, it's okay, we do a Contributor Summit. Yeah, yeah. Is your, are you feeling yeah. that's not necessary? Do I not? I was just assuming we want governance approval to say, yes, let's go ahead with the contributor summit. Here are some ideas. Well, it makes sense uh, to discuss that. The, yeah, suggest we sync up offline because yeah, maybe okay. uh, there is some misconnect. Uh, but okay, yeah, definitely a, a contributor uh, uh, Yeah, we definitely need to do that. Um, maybe at some point i'm not sure about user summit but contributor summit is something we should be doing uh, also we have a day of uh, jenkins uh, japan in december and we have qcon uh, in just a few weeks right yes yeah less than two weeks right mm -hmm. so yeah Mark, me, uh, and I guess Mark uh, have submitted uh, our availability. So Jacqueline, do you need anything else for KubeCon from the Jenkins project? Or will it be basically uh, No, just uh, I think um, like I was able to register you and Marky. And Mark, I didn't see you on the sign-up sheet, so I didn't I'm, sign you yeah. up. No, and you should not. I apologize. I'm not available. I'll be on holiday exactly All right. those days. OK, I'm OK, cool. Office. Okay, uh, just just in case I didn't I missed something. Um, so yeah, I think we're we're all good. I got you guys all registered. Um, so yeah, I think it's just showing up whenever you've you've got some time. Mm -hmm. So just in case, if we need uh, to transfer participation, is it possible in principle? Because I have a pretty bad time on the lab because of my time zone. So if mm -hmm. there is a contributor who would be able to be present for a longer time. Um, so what I could do, um, I'll have to ask, to be quite honest, Oleg, I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. I do have some extra attendee passes, like they, part of our sponsorship, they gave us like 50 attendee passes. Um, so that's also another way that somebody, if they want to hang around the, the CDF booth, um, they at least have a pass, they can chat with people, um, but they might not have like the booth pass. So that that's also another thing too. And if there's folks um, you want to share KubeCon passes with, like I think I've only shared 15. So if there's folks that want to attend because it's $100 right now, um, please let me know and I can provide them a code. So that could be also for members, uh, the yes. project? Okay. We, we, I think it got sent in the um, member newsletter, but one of the things we're realizing is we don't have all of our, <laughs> the right members in there. But yes, mm -hmm. Alyssa, if you, if there's like cloud these folks who want um, like a ticket and they just, they couldn't get it through cloud bees, let me mm -hmm. know. I, I, I got a few to uh, spare. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're good. We're good on KubeCon. Okay, yeah, that's really great. Um, 
yeah, I didn't check whether there would be any Jenkins talks. Uh, there are definitely some Jenkins X ones, uh, but yeah, um, maybe if uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes stories proceed, we will uh, be able to have more representation at the conference in the coming months and years. Okay, so then the the object is Japan. So basically, it's me and Steven uh, Tirana presenting there. Uh, plus, uh, Kosuke uh, doing uh, talk uh, mostly on launchable, from what I understand. Uh, plus, uh, my, some uh, yeah, one talk from Tech Matrix. So it will be a relatively small event, but uh, they keep doing that, and that's great. For FOSDEM, uh, Olivia has submitted uh, an application uh, for the, um, I guess, test automation dev room. So similar to the previous years. I think it's actually CICD dev room, but oh. yeah, it's it's yeah. that same concept. It's yep. it's the same dev room he ran last yes, year. Yes, CICD. Um, yeah, basically, it's not clear to what else happens at FOSDEM because this is the first time they're doing uh, it remote. For example, there was no real call for applications from projects. And yeah, it's not clear uh, how you would do a, a developer table there anyway. Uh, same for call for proposals. I guess they're just about starting uh, to do that. And uh, dev rooms, uh, will uh, do it uh, after mid November when uh, dev rooms are actually announced. But, yeah, I believe that we will have a lot of contributors set for them. So, it's not clear how we do it uh, this year in terms of uh, what community events we try to organize. Okay, then JSOC, right? Okay, so for JSOC, um, we started preparing uh, uh, to the 2020 edition. So there is a blog post staged for um, uh, 2020 results. I'm not sure, maybe I will postpone it uh, even uh, until the early next week. Um, but uh, yeah, the blog post is staged. Also, we have started collecting uh, proposals for 2021 uh, so that we can uh, accumulate some ideas. Again, we are just using framework from the previous year, but it still uh, needs to be seen how we actually organize uh, JSOC uh, next year. So whether we proceed as a single organization with continuous delivery foundation or whether we uh, keep doing it separately, all of these topics are yet to be discussed. And uh, there are also changes in how JSOC organized in 2021. So when we get to close the publication phase um, in uh, January, there will be a lot of uh, topics. But yeah, by now we just collect project ideas, which makes sense anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, yeah, there are just a few ideas, mostly uh, placeholders, but yeah, we can uh, create more. So we haven't even uh, launched uh, the call for proposal. In the coming year. Okay. Then contributor summit uh, 2021. Basically, what we discussed. So, yeah, maybe one question uh, would be to continue to deliver the foundation. About, yeah, that's uh, that's what I was gonna say. Is yeah. um, I know for for CDCon 2021, we were thinking about adding a third day and it being the contributor summit. But um, we've gotten some feedback that it actually should be a standalone event for all of the projects. Um, so I think they're thinking about maybe like, well, A, we need to sync with all of our um, all of our community leaders to see if that's something that they're on board with. And if they prefer a standalone event, like what would that timeline be? Because um, I think I've heard it get kicked around that maybe like February would be a good time frame. But if, if you guys like, yes, please let us know what you need um, regarding the contributor summit. And then I can mm -hmm. start getting the other community leaders on board so that if you need a platform or whatever it is that you need, we can start working with the LF events team to get that coordinated. 
Mm, yeah. So regarding that, we can potentially just do it in Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's um, like the Linux Foundation has a Zoom wrapper called KQ, and it's supposed to like enhance the breakout rooms on Zoom somehow like be able to make it easier for folks to be able to transfer from one room to the other versus the limitation on zoom right now i believe is you get assigned to a room and you have to stay there yeah so it's basically a platform for small events not for conferences, mm -hmm. exactly right? yeah mm -hmm. it's something we could definitely try especially if uh, the linux foundation needs feedback uh, but yeah, for us, it would be likely just opening session, uh, then uh, a few breakout rooms. So mm -hmm. usually what we have at Computer Summit is uh, something like four or five tables uh, focusing on different projects. And then basically uh, getting back together, doing some live demos, uh, doing whatever closing fun events. So. Okay, yeah. And Oleg uh, and Mark, if um, so, I'm thinking about budget wise for next year. If there's something specific that you want to include in the contributor summit, like giving away swags to the contributors, um, let me know so then I can, can include it in my budget. Is it uh, just for Contributor Summit or for whatever uh, community outreach program you have? Uh, so yeah, it would be for, so right now we're talking about Contributor Summit, so Contributor Summit, but yes. So as I'm planning for 2021, I'd like to get an idea of, you know, uh, for the whole year, events for the whole year, whatever that you have in mm -hmm. mind. And what would be the deadline to provide this information? Um, mm -hmm. uh, so if we are in November, say end of this month. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess somebody would need to uh, to gather feedback from all parties right, to prepare this list. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do. I can do that. Do you want me to? Should, should I start the discussion in the outreach? No yeah, if you could uh, start this discussion, it would be ideal. Okay. definitely consume uh, all this uh, schwack we, uh, we can get from sponsors. This is not a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, for events, it's definitely something we need to think uh, more if you want to properly use them. Okay, moving on. Yeah, so CD Foundation annual report. Yeah, so um, last year we put together the annual report that kind of recapped what, what the CD Foundation and each of the projects uh, were doing. So we're doing the same thing again. Um, one of the things I've already put a, a meeting on the books for December. If you scroll down to the project update section, um, I believe, I think the community had already created this for Jenkins, but it was the same um, infographic of like the number of core releases, plugin releases, basically any of those uh, metrics um, that you want to ensure that the community knows about. Um, mm -hmm. This is the template that we're going to be discussing of like, how do we want to like, how do we want to communicate to the community? How do we want to communicate to the community, you know, what the project achieved in 2020? Um, and then also just uh, come to a consensus on, on what that mm -hmm. template's going to look like if we can move forward with the same one or if there's there needs to be updates to it. So that's what that December meeting is about. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, so yeah, I just, I'm trying to attend all of the outreach and SIG meetings for each of the projects to kind of get it in their head, like what, what should we talk about um, for Jenkins and, and how do we represent it? 
it, like what did it achieve in 2020 um so that that's that's why i'm I'm mm -hmm. also bugging you guys here. Because <laughs> um, so you, you did it in January, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yes. So what I'm trying to do, um, Oleg, we plan on publishing this. And let me share. Um, I do have a, a work back calendar of each of the sections. Um, what we're trying to do this year is just put the template together so that in January, um, when that data is available or when the community has the time to put everything together we just have to drop in the content um but the goal is to get it published january the week of january 18th through the 22nd so it's more kind of like later half of of january because i i did tell tracy this that last year we probably didn't publish till late june late january and folks didn't get stuff to me till about like after after the new year um so we did build that in um but mm -hmm. yeah we just want to kind of start planting the seed and and then let folks kind of put together that summary of what they want to include. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, let me find that document and then I'll tag it there too. But yeah, that's that's really the, the biggest update there. Mm -hmm. yeah, great, thank you. So they will definitely do that. We have plenty of time. Okay. So we can uh, spend some time to list highlights or we can uh, just uh, finish the meeting earlier. Okay, if I didn't want to put it in cups. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we will definitely need uh, to attend graduation at CDF. A hack fest. Um, yeah, the Bridge. UI UX. Uh... So it's basically a JSOC, a JSOC, hack fest. Hacktoberfest. Yeah. yeah. Elections, um, any releases as well. For releases, we will definitely need to think uh, what to put. <laughs> but last year, we just put some of the statistics, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we just did some mm -hmm. like high level statistics. Um, uh, yeah, started special interest groups. Yeah, we didn't really talk about releases specifically apart from summaries. So, but yeah, we, we need to do something. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever whatever happened in in twenty twenty, like let's like if, if if nothing technical happened, it's okay. Let's just cover like the events and all that kind of stuff. I think that's really good community building. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, like maybe we can also share the um, the user stories and the case studies. Yeah, like the Jenkins is the way campaign results. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely maybe a separate bullet and yeah, just uh, putting uh, things uh, here together and we also can just highlight the recent releases so I have already sent a template uh, for what we were sharing with CDF last week amongst the update so there we put some uh, key features uh, probably we could also yeah and then wasn't also like the Jenkins yes. engine templating uh, isn't so, that a kind wasn't that kind of like a big deal too um because it tells sort of like the interoperability story potentially there so well, yes and no uh the okay. <laughs> engine started uh, last year okay and uh, there are plans for 2.0 but uh, these plans are a work in progress i'm not sure whether the major release will happen oh, okay we'll... okay got it yeah sorry uh, i thought there was some some big update over the summer with the jenkins engine template no, I don't recall so. Okay. So we have some candidates, for example, yeah, uh, basically GitHub, uh, apps, uh, checks, pipeline is YAML, also uh, uh, my pipeline plugin if it's ready. So, on. so 
yeah, this at least is something we will need to, uh, to think about carefully. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got time, so. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just brain dump. It, it, it might be worth putting a roadmap roadmap entry. Oh, you've got public roadmap, but then yeah, I just some of, highlight some of the things that are completed on the roadmap. And, yeah, you know, that would be awesome. It's a good story to tell there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we started the roadmap and here are some of the things completed. Here's an update of, of what where we're at with that roadmap. Yeah. yeah. So we, we have a lot of the stuff that are archiving some items. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there is quite a number of green and uh, so green is released, gray is preview. And yeah, actually we should start thinking about what to put there, especially for example, for two and service integrations. So yeah, for the planner, I think it's quite empty at the moment. So we'll probably need to work with contributors on that. But yeah. Very cool. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll keep on working on it. I'll keep bugging you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Anything else for today? Oh. Then yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, talk to you in two weeks. Okay. Bye. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.